Hello Year 5, it's Miss Hall here um, to do your reading week 9 video. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at Fantastic Mr Fox by Roald Dahl. So before we get started I'll just run through a quick glossary. Um, I've pulled out some words from the text that I felt <clears throat> you may need to clarify. So the first word is objectionable which means to cause distaste or opposition to be unpleasant or offensive. Portly, rather fat or large, plump. Orchard is an enclosed land um, planted with fruit trees. So often not, not, not like fields where you have the, the various crops, um, but similar, except you'd have long lines of trees, fruit trees planted. So you might have an apple or orchard, for, for example. A poach, um, could mean uh, to a way of cooking, so you might poach an egg, for example, but um, in this context, in the text that we're about to read, it means um, illegally hunting or catching uh, animals. So there are horrible people that may poach tigers for their fur, for example, or uh, elephants for their tusks, but this is extremely immoral and illegal and um, there are a lot of people now doing a lot, lots of conservationists doing a lot to try and fight this. Um, and then the last word, blighter, a person who is regarded with contempt and irritation. So you might look down on this person and find them annoying, irritating. Okay, let's get started. I'm just going to read through the text that you've got in your packs um, and just do a little bit of a teacher aloud as we go through, um, just to help you have a deeper understanding of the text. Okay, down in the valley there were three poultry farms. So poultry farms are farms that farm uh, meat but poultry is like bird so it would be a duck, a turkey or a chicken for example. The owners of these farms had done well. So this phrase tells us when it says they done well they're successful, they're successful farmers. You know they're probably uh, farming good meat, uh, selling it, making, making good money. They're doing well for themselves. They were also objectionable men. So this is this word, objectionable. It tells us that they were very disagreeable. They weren't very pleasant. People didn't like them. They offended people. All three of them were about as nasty and mean as any men you could meet. Their names were Farmer Boggis, Farmer Bunce and Farmer Bean. So I quite like the way the author has given them names, all beginning with B. I think this is quite effective. It kind of makes them sound like a terrible trio, for example. Boggis kept thousands of chickens. He was enormously portly. This was because he ate three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast, lunch and supper. So if we didn't know what portly meant, we could read around the word to help us understand. We can see that he eats an awful lot of food. Um, so if he's enormous, and we know that means about size, enormously portly, we, we, we could guess that it, we could have a good guess and assume it means um, something about his size. And we know because we've looked, we've clarified the word that portly does mean rather large and fat. Bunce was a duck and goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. So this phrase pot-bellied, again, it's to describe someone who's quite plump. So they might not be fat all over, but they have a really big round tummy. And the word dwarf suggests that he's quite short. And it goes on to say, he was so short, his chin would have been underwater in the shallow end of any swimming pool in the world. So it's the author's trying to use this to really emphasize just quite how short he is. He's not just a bit short. If he was in the shallow end, um, his chin would still be underwater. He just about touched the, the bottom. His food was doughnuts and goose livers. He mashed the livers into a disgusting paste and then stuffed them into doughnuts. This diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. So we start to get a sense of this character, maybe not particularly intelligent. He's not really looking after himself, is he? Even though he's getting an awful tummy ache every time he eats, he still continues to eat this way. Um, and I like the phrase beastly temper. So we know temper is when you get very cross, but beastly temper, we think about a monster, a beast being a monster. So we imagine he's quite, um, he's, he's likely to kind of lose control and be quite angry and grizzly and grumbly. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. 
he kept thousands of turkeys in an orchard full of apple trees. He never ate any food at all. So it's interesting that we've now got quite a contrasting character. The other two seem to be quite greedy and, and they're quite large. They eat lots of food. This, this farmer doesn't eat anything at all. Instead, he drank gallons of strong cider. Cider is a type of uh, alcohol made from apples, uh, which he made from the apples in his orchard. He was as thin as a pencil and the cleverest of them all. So that's quite a good simile, um, thin as a pencil. So we get this impression of him being just really, really long and tall and thin and straight. On a hill above the valley, there was a wood. In the wood, there was a huge tree. Under the tree, there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr. and Mrs. Fox and their small four, uh, small, and their four small foxes. I really like the um, I really like the way the author structured this. I think it's really effective because at the end there's just lots of short sentences, and at the end of each sentence, the new sentence starts with what how the sentence finished. So. Uh, there was a wood, in the wood, there was a huge tree, under the tree. It's almost like we're kind of, it's helping us to build up this description. This is helping to describe the setting, but we're sort of slightly digging a little bit deeper with each sentence. It's almost like a Russian doll when you have the large one and then you open it and then you get something inside and then you open it and then you get another little one inside. And each time you open it, you get a little bit more. Um, so I think that's quite an effective way to kind of um, uh, engage the reader. Every evening, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plump chicken from Boggis, a duck or a goose from Bounce, or a nice turkey from Bean? When Mrs. Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley in the blanket of darkness and help himself. So we get this sense that the fact they're having this conversation, what should it be this time? It's almost like this is a regular occurrence. It happens every evening, as it says. So this isn't a new thing, but we start to wonder, is there going to be a little bit of rivalry between the fox and these farmers? Are the farmers OK with him just helping himself to their chickens and gooses, uh, geese, I should say? Um, so it makes me wonder um, whether they're happy about Mr. Fox going and taking what he wants. But we can see that he's a father. He's got four small foxes. You know, he needs to be able to feed them. Um, <clears throat> and I also like the way it says Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley. It's almost like he knows that they're not happy with it. He's worried what might happen if he, if he was to get caught. And this suggests that the farmer's do not do not agree with this um frequent act um of of taking their 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 poultry for his dinner um and i like the phrase valley in the blanket of darkness i think that's lovely in the blanket of darkness that metaphor to suggest a blanket just covering everything in this dark um sheet so we can see he doesn't want to be seen he doesn't want to be found Boggis, Bounce and Bean knew very well what was going on and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away. Less still did they like anything to be poached from them. So we get this sense they're not agreeable people. They're not very nice people. They're not generous. They wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't willingly give food to Mr. Fox, even though it's to feed his family. They wouldn't give anything away. But not only that, they're not actually, they're not, they're not, um, <clears throat> they're not giving this to him. He's stealing from them. So we can see they're really not happy about it at all. So every night, each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on his own farm, hoping to catch the robber. So this suggests that they don't know who it is. They don't know who's taking this food um, or they may do, but they haven't been very successful in catching them catching the culprit and again if we um we we could go a little bit further to say that are we starting to get this impression that mr fox is quite cunning um foxes have this name for themselves as being quite cunning and smart and clever um and is he able to kind of manipulate these farmers and and sneak around them and get his own way and you can imagine the farmers getting more and more and more infuriated with his behavior the fact that he keeps winning and he keeps taking from them <clears throat> okay day two 
but Mr Fox was too clever for them. He always approached a farm with the wind blowing in his face and this meant that if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the stench of that man to Mr Fox's nose from far away. So there we have it. The author is telling us that actually, yes, Mr Fox is clever. He is very clever. He's onto them. He knows they're not happy about it, but he's not going to get caught. Okay, so he makes plans um, to make sure that he's going to be able to get away with it. So he stands downwind so that if the men are lurking, the wind is going to waft the smell, the stench of these men, and he's going to be able to, to dodge them. Uh, Dang and blast that lousy beast, cried Boggis. I'd like to rip his guts out, said Bunce. He must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Boggis, how on earth can we catch the blighter? So here we get this sense of them being extremely infuriated, very annoyed with, um, with the fox. And it's almost got to that point now where they can't take any more. Something has to be done about it. They've got to come up with a plan. But are they going to be smart enough um, to come up with a plan that's going to beat the fox, out, out, outsmart the clever fox? Bean picked his nose delicately with a long finger. So this is the farmer that was compared to a pencil. So not only is he tall and thin, we get this impression that his fingers are also long and thin, like lots of pencils um, on the end of his, of his hands. He's got pencil-like fingers as well. So it's just everything about him is very long and, uh, long and, and, and slim and stick-like. Um, and he's picking his nose, but delicately. It's a very strange way to describe someone picking their nose, quite a disgusting thing to be doing but to do it delicately with his long finger it almost makes your skin crawl a little bit and the author's doing a very good job of making these farmers seem quite uh, quite disagreeable and unpleasant I have a plan he said you've never had a decent plan yet said Bunce pipe down bellowed Bean tomorrow night we will all hide just outside the hole where the fox lives we will wait there until he comes out then bang 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 very clever, said Bunce, but first we shall have to find the hole. My dear Bunce, I've already found it, said the crafty Bean. We get this impression that out of the three of them, we know that uh, Bean is the most clever, but it's almost like um, he's like the leader of them all and he's always one step ahead of them. He's the one that's got the, pa uh, the plans and the ideas. Um, it's up in the wood on the hill. It's under a huge tree. Dot, dot, dot. So they're starting to scheme and make plans now to try and get at Mr. Fox. Well, my darling, said Mr. Fox, what shall it be tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs. Fox. Bring us two plump ducks, if you please. One for you and me and one for the children. Ducks it shall be, said Mr. Fox. Bunce is best. Now do be careful, said Mrs. Fox. My darling, said Mr. Fox, I can smell those goons a mile away. Those goons, those clowns. So it's almost like, yeah, I'm aware of them, but it's nothing to worry about. I don't have to worry about them. I'm way too smart for them. They're just, they're just a bunch of goons. They're just a bunch of clowns. They don't know what they're doing. There's no way they can get, they can get me. So he's very confident in his ability. I can smell those goons a mile away. I could even smell one from the other. Boggis gives off a filthy stink of rotten chicken skins. Bunce reeks of goose livers. And as for Bean, the stench of apple cider hang around, hang around him like poisonous fumes. Yes, but just don't get careless, said Mrs Fox. Don't you worry about me, said Mr Fox. I'll see you later. So perhaps Mrs. Fox is starting to become worried because she's thinking, well, actually, how many times can you get away with it? And also every time you get away with it, you get a little bit more confident, Mr. Fox. And can that turn into arrogance? And will you get a little bit careless, uh, you know, being a little bit too confident, being a little bit lazy? Uh, is that going to give the farmers an opportunity to strike back? And then it goes on to say, but Mr. Fox would not have been quite so arrogant had he known exactly where the three farms were waiting at that moment. We know, don't we, from what we've read already, that they've got this plan to wait right outside the hole and to jump at him before he, is, he even has a chance. They were just outside the hole, each one crouching behind a tree with his gun loaded. And it stops there. So... 
just to finish off, I know you've got some questions to answer based on these texts. So hopefully you've got a better understanding of the text now. Um, but just to finish off a quick question, what do you think will happen next? Do you think the farmers will succeed in their mission? Use evidence from the text. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, prediction here. Do you think the farmers will succeed in their mission? What is their mission? Their mission is to shoot the fox dead. They've had enough of him stealing from them. De every single evening he comes in, he sneaks in the dark and he takes their food and they are not happy about it and they want him dead. Enough is enough. Now, do you think they're going to succeed? Use evidence from the text. Well, I would think that because we're quite early on, early on in the book and the book is called Fantastic Mr. Fox, I think if the farmer shot him dead on page four, I don't think we'd have much of a story. So we can start to make this assumption that actually, maybe they're not going to be successful and maybe the story is going to be a series of battles of rivalry between the farmers and the fox okay also um, if we look at evidence from the text as the question asks we could come back to this point here so i could say something like um i don't think that the farmers will be successful because i think that mr fox will outsmart them Fantastic Mr. Fox will outsmart them because the text says Mr. Fox was too clever for them. We know that he's really got good smell as well. It says here, I can smell these goons a mile away. I can even smell one from the other. Well, if he's got such good smell, it makes me wonder if he's at, when he's leaving his den, is he going to be able to smell the men before he leaves? Is he going to kind of go off on his daily hunt? And just as, he let, just as he approaches the exit of his den, is he going to have a little sniff and go, hang on a minute, something doesn't smell quite right here. Um, now, perhaps he might just go back in, but I have a feeling, because Mr Fox is so clever, I have a feeling that he's going to come up with some cunning plan to get back at them. And I also have a feeling that because he refers to them as goons and we do get the impression apart from Bean who seems to have a little bit of uh, some brains he has a little bit of intelligence the other two just seem to be a little bit uh, clown-like and silly and they're just more interested in their food and fighting with each other uh, that perhaps Mr Fox is going to kind of run rings around them a little bit and try and make them look even more silly um, try and set them up in certain situations. Okay. Um, I wonder what your predictions are. What do you think will happen next? Do you think the farmers will succeed in their mission? Use evidence from the text. So maybe you could have a little go. Um, and good luck with your questions. Um, and yeah, take care. Bye guys.